So we didn't start. Uh, we didn't. <laughs> on paragraph 16. Well, I jumped ahead. Okay. I, I mean, I, I've been... I've been focusing on paragraph 63 for a month now because I think it it really summarizes a, a, an essence about Jungian psychology, which is that we're not talking about the rational world at all. I mean, there's there's this reform minister out in California that's gotten all over. Um, Jordan Peterson about his Bible lectures, right? And he, boy, he's got every rational argument under the sun why Jordan Peterson doesn't know what he's talking about. And the problem is that he's, it's every rational argument under the sun. And but he's fascinated with them. He is yeah. fascinated. He's, yeah. he's, drawn, he's drawn, drawn to it. He's excited about it. you're telling, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. And and so I think he's a potential convert. Yeah. That's what I think. I think because he's open minded. He's, I mean, he, I wouldn't say open minded, but he's seeing a potential there. He's excited about it. You can see it. In his yeah, face. yeah. You this know? Paul Vanderclay. Yeah. yeah, I mean, he's intelligent. He's yeah, he's a smart guy, and he's making all the arguments that he learned in divinity school. Okay, and but the problem is, it's not based on argument. You can't, you can't do it with arguments. It's based on experience. It's based on an experience. That's why it's almost like I've noticed that some of the therapists and people who talk about Jung, who are supposedly the experts, really haven't had the experience. They're still talking about it in terms of the rational, um, you know, textbook, um, what's been written down and what they've memorized, and using their thinking function, but they don't really have that connection. So they're not on they're not on the emotional side at all. Well, it's not even the emotional side. It's the having had the experience, um, the thing where you say, "I know God." You know, after you after you've had that experience, and you can talk about uh, people. It's like it's like there's a threshold, and people who've had the experience can go over here, and they go, "Oh yeah, there's there's Buddhism, there's there's Islam, and whatever." And I can I can understand what the mystics are saying. Yeah. But until you reach that point, the mystics are just talking. You know, they might as well just be making list of things t to memorize because you don't know how to integrate it into your own experience, which, which is easy once you've once you've had it. Right. Well, one of the and that's why Jung sometimes to me is like it's it's not going to make sense to people. But it, this person you're talking about who's fascinated, I think there's some people realize there's something there, even though they're in total denial, and they're trying to get there because they know something's there, but they can't figure out why they can't figure it out because right. you don't figure it out. <laughs> and that's the feeling that you get from watching that. Video. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, which reminds me about a, a passage in the Red Book, which I want to read to you because... Remember that the Logos, and even Jordan Peterson is talking about the Logos still. And this isn't the Logos. This is the, what, ethos? What, what's the opposite of Logos? Eros. Eros, okay. All right, so this is the Eros, okay. And, and so in the Red Book, Reader's Edition, page 244, Dr. Jung is in the midst of his active imaginations, and he says, and this is him talking to this entity within his psyche, and he says, thank you for your patience, but it matters very much to me to know how you read and what you take from this book. Answer, your question is not easy to answer. It's easier to explain colors to a blind person. You must know one thing above all. A succession of words does not have only one meaning, but men strive to assign only a single meaning to the sequence of words in order to have an unambiguous language. This striving is worldly and constricted and belongs to the deepest layers of the divine creative plan. On the higher levels of insight into divine thoughts, 
you recognize that the sequence of words has more than one valid meaning, only to, only, only to the all-knowing is it given to know all the meanings of a sequence of words. Increasingly, we try to grasp a few more meanings. Ah, if I understand you correctly, you think that the holy writings of the New Testament also have a doubleness, an, ex an exoteric and an esoteric meaning, as a few Jewish scholars contend concerning their holy books. Answer, this bad superstition is far from me. I observe <laughs> that you are wholly inexperienced in divine matters. Okay, but anyway, the point is, a sequence of words doesn't have only one meaning. And so, to the extent that in the beginning was the word, yes. In the beginning was a word. But once you have more than one word, you have more than one meaning, right? And, and so we, we haven't gotten to the Eros side. I mean, that's where these religious experiences are. Do you agree with that, Bill? Yeah, but the logo side is the ego side, and you've got to have a strong enough, like you were saying earlier, you've got to be, have a boat that's big enough to hold the fish. So, precisely. Yeah. So is Eros spirit or love? Eros was... Eros is relation. Relation? Yeah, yeah. Okay. or love, yeah. or, okay. yeah, or uh, connection. Okay. Whereas Logos is uh, discrimination, the sword. Yeah. Logo, Logos is the thinking, the sword, okay. and the tarot, I agree. The swords are the thinking side. And, and we got a convert. <laughs> and, the, and the intuitive side is what grows out of out of the psyche, right? Mm -hmm. And so, I, I mean, I, I can do sensing things, right? But I absolutely detest it. But it happens to you. Yeah. Without I'm, you thinking it. That's what's interesting. Yeah, without... Without desiring it, I am forced to do sensing activities and thinking act. Well, thinking, I'm a thinking person, but mm -hmm. I know that I have an arrow side now. But as far as sensing and intuitive, though, I am hopeless because I'm so far out on the intuitive end of the spectrum, okay, where I've tested with MBTI and I'm in the 99th percentile of intuitive. And so, I, you know, if I have to go get the details of something, God help me, I, I just, I, I detest it. I mean, this is He's why. A lawyer. I, yeah, this say. is no, this is why I hated practicing law. Absolutely, yeah, sure. And you know, if I had known this before I went to law school, I never would have done it. Okay. I was going to kill myself just getting the materials ready for my lawyer. I hated it so much. You know, oh yeah. Because of what she needed was just like. And, and and doing anything, like this. yeah, doing anything in the law is all these facts and details, and I, you know, yeah. because as a as an intuitive, I see three trees and I assume there's a forest. So I, you know, I don't need all you these. You work you work with that assumption. Facts? You want facts? I don't give a damn about yeah. facts. I don't need facts. I know what the answer is, <laughs> right? Maybe <laughs> yeah. God determined that you do need that. Well, see, thinking and feeling are subsets because intuition and sensing are actually, it's almost like intuition and sensing are our most animal side. And within that are two functions called thinking and, and feeling. And those two allow us to to parse and, and work. Because you have to have a meeting there. You, there's no way you could exist totally, right? Without, if you just had thinking and a feeling. Well, if you just had intuition and sensation, you'd basically be an animal. You'd run around and okay. you'd respond to things. You see what I right. mean? So thinking and, and uh, feeling are additions, additional functions that allow you to either focus more on one or the other or both, and, and you can sort the world out. You, that way you have a memory of things so that you can act through your will.
Okay. Yeah. Okay. We have to leave this restaurant, but <laughs> before we do, um, I want to point out that the my entire outline of Ion is in the Dropbox. Okay. One of the recent Dropboxes. I have to double check where it is, which which week it is in, but. You can download it. I've only I'm only up to chapter five, honestly. But if you need access to the Dropbox, you need to send email to skip.conover at gmail.com and send me your regular your regular email address, and I will add you to our Dropbox so you can have things like this and like this document. And you can work with us. Okay, looking forward to next week.